So saluting the judge, our first horse and rider, a familiar face throughout the years at the makeover and a familiar face already today, we have Britt Vegas, rider number 1122 aboard Mr. Park and they will be jumping at the three foot height. Perfect, thank you. Really like this horse's form over the jumps. You see he's very up. His neck comes beautifully out of his shoulder and it keeps him up. And it's very easy for this horse to set back over these jumps. And uh, as we've talked about before with this horse, uh, he's got a lot of potential to go a lot higher than these jumps. He really has a beautiful arc over the jumps. You can see that it comes quite easily for him and he really enjoys it. Some horses can get tense and get excited and that tightens their back up. And one, one positive with Mr. Park is he gets really excited, but that tension does not lock his body up. So he's still a very free mover. That's interesting. That's why we see the arc in him still because he doesn't get too nervous. First round for Mr. Park in Britt Vegas, and now they'll go into the jump off. And we saw in the gallop after eventing that this horse can really pick up his speed. He reacts a little bit to the whistle, and that's one thing to remember is that this is such a different environment competing inside for a lot of these horses. It does sound a little bit like the bell ring at the starting gate, though. <laughs> And also Jonathan has announced this horse. So if they have good memories, uh, he, he might even remember that uh, he heard that voice right, right while he was running as well. <laughs> I've heard that other people, that, oh, he recognizes your voice. <laughs> I'm flattered because um, I'm a fan of these horses. Oh, late drop, that was an unlucky rail. I was just about to comment how well he's done that combo now three times. Uh, he's had a really good distance to it and just hung, hung that back leg just a little bit. Let's take a moment to appreciate Mr. Park and Britt Vegas finalists in eventing and stadium jumping. Britt Vegas running Royal Fox stables that rehomes many off the track thoroughbreds. You can see the Royal Fox logo on their tack and a veteran here at the Retired Racehorse Project Thoroughbred Makeover. Don Ash, I think we're, we're all fans. And, and I was a fan of this horse when he was on the track. Yeah, I think he's, he was really unlucky to have the rail down, um, just hit it a little bit with his back foot. Um, Ashley, you had said earlier that you were admiring the way he was approaching the combination. Uh, yeah, some of the young horses can get a little bit excited seeing that, that combo come in. And because he was in the Aventors, that's the, the third time we got to see him, him do that line. And he had really nice distances to it. And we'd seen some others kind of struggle with that distance. And his stride was really nice and his rhythm in and out of it. I was really happy with his just that last unlucky rail where he just dropped that back foot. So now from one horse that was in the eventing finale to the winner of the eventing finale that's also back here for stadium jumping introducing number 1103 legends hope ridden by jazz napravnik and they'll also be jumping at the three foot height we'll have a course change after their round to the final two horses and riders who will be jumping at two foot six One thing I really love about this competition is that you have the opportunity to choose two, six, or three foot uh, green horse competition. There are some horses that are, are young and t truly not re ready to do uh, th three foot, but then there's horses like this that 
I don't think would really show that well over 2-6. So it's great to have that option, and I think it's great that they're, they're scored evenly. There's no edge whether you do the higher or, or lower heights. It is how best do you show the abilities of your horse, and something like this need, needs to be at that three-foot height to really show what he's got. A little easier to you can see that he's a little easier to control in the second round than he was in the eventing round even though you see him popping his head up a little bit there so he's a horse that I think needs a lot of height to challenge him he needs a lot of exercise to challenge him too and unfortunate to have a rail there also again with the back foot and you saw he what I was saying how how Park didn't do Park came in very rhythmic and relaxed and He's gotten a, a, a little bit excited there and had to be managed, and it was managed well, but uh, I think he saw the uh, eventing as his warm-up and then finished with a gallop, and he was ready to uh, go off and do some cross-country right now. Jazz and Pravnik and Legends Hope with their first round, and now they'll go in to the jump-off. So, Ashley, when you're on the track, the goal is go fast. And we talk about how these horses, we want them to go forward, but there's also that balance. How do you achieve that of, like, be forward, but also be rhythmic as well? Lots and lots of transitions at home. Uh, this does take time. Um, surprisingly, some of the, the horses pick it up very quickly. But on, on the track, most everything they do is pull with their forehand, and we want them really to set back and use their hind ends. And you see he's getting a little excited, so he's not quite setting back as much as you'd want him to. And same thing, he's just flattening a little bit. So um, I think this is one horse that had a little disadvantage doing eventing first. I think he has not settled from his gallop in the eventings. Uh, he seemed a bit more rideable in the eventing. I think if they had show jumping first, uh, he, he might have been able to win both disciplines, but he's a little less rideable this round. Another full day for Legends Hope and Jazz Napravnik. You're going to see them later on this afternoon as they are contenders for the Thoroughbred Makeover Champion Award sponsored by Churchill Downs and the People's Choice Award sponsored by Achieve Equine. Congratulations to them. So now we're going to see a quick course change as we have two more horses and riders to go, and they'll be going at the two foot six height. The first two riders went at the three foot height, and Ashley, you were saying on the live stream sponsored by Maryland Jockey Club, the benefit to having this option for riders and their horses that they can choose based on where their training is at in a few of the disciplines, what height would be best. Yes, I love that aspect of the makeover. Uh, you'll hear this said a, a ton of times today, but this is a green horse competition. Even the 2020 horses are still green in, in these new professions, and uh, there's varying ages, and with only a limited time to prepare for this, there's some horses that are truly not ready physically, mentally, uh, to be able to do that three-foot height, and there's some horses that will not show that well at the lower height. So the fact that you have these two different heights that are competed evenly and they're, they're weighted the exact same. So as you see in the finale, we have some two six horses and we have some three foot horses. And there's the only advantage or disadvantage is, is how well you know your horse. If you know your horse is not gonna show well at two six and you need that bigger jump to set them back and get those knees snappy, you have that option. And if you have you know, maybe a young four year old who is just learning but still a really classy horse you stick with that two six and that's the best way to show them off so one of my favorite things about this competition is that both two six and three feet in each division they're they're scored equally we had the two rounds in each of the show jumper rounds the the first round and then the jump off you can see the time that's posted 
for each of the riders. And Donna, what were your thoughts on how those horses that we saw that were both in the eventing finale, how then they came back into to show jumping? Because when you're racing, it's one race and you go back to the barn area. This was two major competitions that they had to run back to back. Well, I thought Ro- um, Jazz's horse, when he came out, he looked like he had settled a bit from the uh, eventing competition. But as that round went on, you could see that he became a bit more aggressive and she was having to contain him more and more. And he kept trying to sort of jump away from her a little bit. And so you saw his head thrown up in the air. You know, I think one of the things that, that people who haven't done the transition, as you all have, and Ashley, maybe you can speak to that, is that thoroughbreds at the track are never really taught with a lot of leg. And the reason why is because they're ridden in races by jockeys who have stirrups four inches long. So there's not a lot of purpose in teaching them cues with a leg when the jockey who competes them isn't going to have leg on them. And so, Ashley, can you talk about how difficult it is to teach the, the thoroughbred as they transition to accept that leg and those cues? I found at least initially, if you, if you start slow and start clearly and are using your body as well in, in conjunction with the leg, at least the initial idea to move off the leg generally comes pretty quickly. And if you watched any of the master class yesterday, you saw some of the horses that had, you know, just had that rider on for the first time that by the end of the session, they had started to understand. Now you're not going to go and start asking them for beautiful leg yields and half passes that takes a long time to develop those muscles but horses are the thoroughbreds in particular are, are very very uh responsive to those things and, and are, are, it's really um if done tactfully it's it's a really easy theory to teach them and then it takes a little while to cultivate all the details in between i like that it's it's easy in theory <laughs> <laughs> What would be some advice, Ashley, that you may give, say, the race trainers that are here, the racing connections, that when these horses transition, if you do a few things while they're on the track, that it could go a long way when they finish their racing careers? Uh, We do a lot of work with one trainer in particular out in Colorado, uh, Kim Oliver, who's an awesome horseman, and she starts all of her horses to stand at mounting blocks, move off legs, trail rides, and it makes an immense change difference with them off the track. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Donna. And now back to the action inside the TCA covered arena with two more horses and riders to go in the show jumper discipline sponsored by Excel Equine, both at the two foot six height. First of which is number 1015 Athira, ridden by Cody Young, a junior rider from Germantown, Tennessee. This is a horse that is owned by Margaret Webb and is for sale as part of the ASPCA Makeover Marketplace. Uh, Extensive racing career with 34 starts and almost $130,000 in earnings off of six wins and 19 top three finishes. Based in Florida, retiring from racing at Gulfstream Park, Cody, an 18-year-old who's been riding since he was six and he just graduated high school this year and will be attending Southwest Community College during the fall semester, his first time competing in the thoroughbred makeover. Ashley, our son Chase may be watching the broadcast and he's eight years old and Chase, this is a rider to to look to who started riding when he was six and now he's uh, 18 years old and he he looks like he's going to have a promising future. He was the first horse in the show jumping competition who didn't have a rail down at that second competition. Did he approach it differently or is it because it's a shorter jump now? Uh, It's hard to say exactly whether if it were a bigger jump, if there would have been a knock there that presented really well to it. Uh, This horse is super cute jumper. He's got nice snappy knees. Um, Actually got a little wiggly in there. So a really keen horse to be able to, to pull himself out of there. Got got in kind of tight and had to put a little extra work and then even kind of wiggled coming out of it also. So smart horse, learning the job well uh, and will be nice and adjustable. Uh, it's really nice to see those horses that even at this green stage are, are figuring out how to, how to help their, their rider out uh, in, in different situations like that. Yeah. And that when you're wiggly, unlike Don, as you said, on the racetrack where your hands are your biggest cues, the, the cue is going to come from your legs rather than trying to to pull them when they're wiggly. 
and uh, much better going through that second time. Uh, got a little flat, but the rhythm was much nicer. Um, but when it came out, got a little flat and excited around the turn and just didn't have quite enough time to, to settle, settle for that second to last jump there. So he couldn't get the upward propulsion. Yeah, if you saw, he kind of went across it rather than over it. Yeah. So that was Cody Young, junior rider aboard Athera. And they were in second place in the prelims. Thank you to our jump crew for resetting the rails. And we'll have one more horse and rider to go in the show jumper discipline. They came in in first place into the finale. It is Canton Comet, who is ridden by Samantha Fawcett. Canton Comet, a uh, five-year-old bred here in Kentucky, a Dark Bay mare who sold across the way at Keeneland as a yearling for $80,000 and had a nine-race career with a win and a second-place finish racing in Kentucky at Churchill Downs. Churchill Downs, the sponsor of the Thoroughbred Makeover Championship Award, as well as running at Oaklawn Park in Arkansas and Arlington Park in Illinois. And as we have a minute or two before they get the whistle to go, Ashley, you uh, immediately took a liking to this horse. Just looked up and uh, a very striking mare, just a, a nice presence and lovely gates and uh, looks pretty relaxed, so it'll be interesting to see this round. The horse has a bonnet on, but I think this may be one of the horses with the mare ears. I, I like those mares that have the, the longer ears, kind of like the, the great racehorse Donna uh, Enable used to have the, those wonderful ears. Yeah, sometimes they need that to just sort of block out some of the noise that you definitely wouldn't want a horse to have blinkers on in a competition like this, but if you can block out some of the <laughs> noise, it does yeah. help. <laughs> For the record, this horse did not run in blinkers when she was racing. <laughs> she came into that jump cross cantering, but was able to fix it over. Uh, even got a nice distance and jumped really well. Some horses will get uh, disconnected and ha have trouble setting back if they come in disjointed like that. Ashley, how much do you want as the rider to communicate to the horse about the approach and the distance? And how much, especially for a green horse, do you want the horse to use this as a learning opportunity to figure those things out on their own? Ideally, you don't want to use the, the finals as a learning opportunity. So hopefully at some point before um, you have given them that opportunity to learn. I am not a big fan of micromanaging your horse and telling them exactly when, how, and where to jump uh, because that will get you into trouble at some point. So uh, your goal, as I, I say, and all, all of my students will know this well, uh, your job is rhythm and straightness and the horse's job is to get over the jump. If you start nitpicking, every little movement you do, they're responsible for adjusting. So if you keep your mind on seeing your distance a, a little ways out would be ideal, but then keeping your rhythm all the way through and riding beyond the jump, just not up to the jump and stopping. So the horse does have a responsibility as the pair to understand where that jump is, how to get over it, and uh, how to balance themselves on the other side. Now to the jump off, and the first jump that they do was jump number eight in the first round, and it gives them an opportunity to make that tighter jump off turn here. He seemed almost surprised by that first jump, Ashley. Can you talk about that? It's off a, a tighter turn. And they've jumped all the other jumps, I believe, and obviously aside from the cross-country jumps, but they had not jumped that one yet, and I just don't think uh, she was ready for it. And aside from that, the only jump that's really been seeming to give some horses trouble is that second one in the combo, but uh, they're going straight, straight towards home at that point. And with the combo, it's really important that you set back. Uh, and not get flat over it. So that's definitely a challenging setup there with that combo. 
She really is a beautiful mare when she gets it right, though. Oh, yeah. No, there's a reason why uh, she's, she's riding last, and uh, she made the finals, and she's right there at the top. And what a, what a lovely horse with a, a very, very bright future in this discipline. Canton Comet and Samantha Fawcett and Ashley, you were just saying on the live stream that this is going to be a horse with a bright future. What were some of the things that you particularly enjoyed seeing about this horse in the stadium jumping ring? Uh, she just seems very mature. She came in relaxed. It looks like she's been doing this for, for years and just very rhythmic, uh, very snappy knees, a nice balance and, and seems quite adjustable as well. So thank you to our judges, to our horses and riders for show jumping sponsored by XL Equine. The judges, once again, Martin Duzon from the Frame Sport Horse, originally from France, and he was part of the Makeover Masterclass last time at the Makeover doing a free jumping clinic. Silvio Mazzoni, a former U.S. eventing team show jumping coach and the show jumping steward Emily Daniel Salvaggio, this course designed by William Robertson. So we'll wait for the scores to be tabulated and then we will recognize the top finishers for show jumper and then we'll move on to the next discipline, show hunter. Thank you to everyone who's here inside the TCA Covered Arena, enjoying, enjoying the mega makeover. And to uh, all of those watching on the tbmakeover.org website for the live stream that is sponsored by Maryland Jockey Club. And now it's time to pin the ribbons for the top 10 for Show Jumper sponsored by XL Equine, as well as recognizing a few special awards, finishing in 10th place, number 1192, Two Steps to Toga, ridden by amateur Katherine Ungerman. Our ninth place finisher in Show Jumper, sponsored by XL Equine. Number 1157, Scheherazad Schultz, ridden by Rose Velvet. Eighth place finisher, number 1204, Wings Locked Up, written by Diane McDonald. We can still announce the winner, just not what they've won, right? The seventh place finisher, number 1099, Casey Against World, written by Alexa McVoy. Finishing in sixth place, number 1182, Sweet Talking Man, written by Emma Partridge. How long is send in nine through six? And let's hear it for our horses and riders as they come in after getting pinned and we'll have the top five finishers announced next. Finishing in fifth place, number 1207, You Betcha, ridden by Karen Benson. You Betcha also winning the top amateur award and the Thoroughbred Charities of America award as well.
Finishing in fourth place, they had the highest finale score, also a top five finisher in eventing, number 1122, Mr. Park, ridden by Britt Vegas. Mr. Park also won the Best Conditioned Award, sponsored by Nina Bonney. Third place finisher, number 1103, Legends Hope, ridden by Jazz Napravnik, also the Blue Ribbon winners for eventing. In second place, Number 1015, Athera, ridden by Cody Young, also the top finishing junior rider. And that means that the champion for the Mega Makeover for the class of 2020 in Show Jumper, sponsored by Excel Equine, a score of 246.65, number 1036, Canton Comet and Samantha Fawcett. Also recognizing the top team finisher, it was number 1143, Peyton Place with Alyssa Kelly. And the top finishers, if you'd like to simulate your horse's race days, you can gallop around the TCA Covered Arena. Congratulations. Yeah. That ordered it. 